Oh, Rammer Jammer. He's got a sledgehammer. Let's get extreme tonight on the Bammer Slammer. If you're watching us live right now on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash smackdraw, thank you so much for joining us. Please don't forget to, to follow us, and if you're in the chat with us, announce yourself so we can shout you out during the show. Thank you so much for joining us live. If you're watching us on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash podcast, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and also please make sure that you click that bell so that every time we post a new video, you'll get notified immediately and you can keep up to date with us while, we're, while you're watching. Thank you for all of that. Again, leave us a comment. Click the bell we, we appreciate it very highly if you're listening to us right now on a podcast on whatever podcast platform you prefer make sure you like the podcast subscribe to the podcast and leave us a five-star rating i promise you our content deserves it we have some great people on this show all the time we put out great content and the more feedback you give us we thank you for that and we thank you for your support as well tonight we're covering extreme rules we're going to preview the pay-per-view this coming sunday which is going on 8 p.m eastern standard time on the peacock network and uh to join me this evening I have a very esteemed, awesome panel with me tonight. Over here to my right, she is a co-host of the Queens of the Ring podcast, where they discuss pro wrestling, hot topics, and whatever else they deem worthy for discussion. She's Bray Wyatt's biggest fan, a proud supporter of the Bullet Club for life. And she's also, just like Patsy Cline, a little crazy. This is Crazy Nikki out in Phoenix, Arizona. Nikki, how are you this evening? I'm good. I'm doing good. Okay, I know this is going to sound strange, and we're kind of acting a little off because newsflash: we actually crashed right before we started doing the show, <laughs> so we're all kind of like hearing these things for the second time. Thankfully, we didn't get too far into the show, uh, but yeah, yeah, Nikki, I'm, I'm as always, I'm so thankful to have you on tonight. Uh, Nikki's a sister from another mister to me. Uh, we we chat off and on 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 Twitter and on social media, and uh, she's always got great insights and takes. And I'm glad to have you with me tonight. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Down diagonally from me uh, is one of the co-hosts here on the Smack Draw brand. You can hear him and our fearless leader, Kyle, recap the week of wrestling on the Rewind Show, which airs every weekend. He's the dog kid on Master. He's the man of a thousand rants. Make sure you watch his mute RN videos as they go up on our social media all the time. He's the Triple H to my HBK, and it's time to play the RN game. <laughs> RN, how are you this evening, sir? Yeah, I'm just killing it with that intro. So I, I ain't got nothing to follow up on that with. Well, Shit. Man, I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad to have you here. And uh, if you don't like me and our end together, we got two words for you. All right. <laughs> and finally Finally, right below me um, is the host of the Apron Bump podcast, which drops every single week, usually on Wednesdays. He covers the best and worst of pro wrestling from the past and present. So no matter what show you watch of his, you're guaranteed to be entertained and learn something new. Please let me introduce to you the hardest part of the ring, Mr. Kyle. Kyle, how are you this evening, sir? I'm doing fantastic. I'm excited for Extreme Rules. Beware of dog. Does anybody get that joke? I yes, do get that, that joke. joke. Okay. I do get that joke. They, they, they had technical difficulties as well. So <laughs> yes, they uh, did. But yes, thank you for having me. I'm excited oh, to be here. I'm excited to have you. Uh, hey, hey, Kyle. Kyle's in the chat. Yeah. Um, but guys, I'm excited to have you all tonight. Thank you all of you that are joining us a little bit later than we announced, but we're excited to have each and every one of you here with us. We thank you for joining us as we get ready to preview Extreme Rules. Um, let me just uh, throw this out there. I think RN's going to use this for one of his rants later. What are y'all's feelings on gimmick-based WWE pay-per-views? Terrible. Awful. What? Non-existent? Eh? Catfishing? Yeah, but my thing I mean... is, it, like, it, it makes them build the pay-per-view around the match types and not focus on the story. It, it, it tries to bring people in using the, the cages and the structures yeah. and not focusing on the character development and the storyline. So it's like right. makes it kind of, I don't know. I, I'd actually counter that. Cause I don't <laughs> think, I don't think they use the structures or any of the shit that's supposed to be in it at all. Yeah, Like it's hell in a cell and there's one hell in a cell match or money in the bank. Now I guess there is two money in the banks, mm -hmm. but TLC. There's well, normally well, we got one two, TLC. We, we got two hell in a cells this year. And last year we got three hell in a cells. So that was a little overkill to me, but right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's either overkill or not enough. Exactly. So I like elimination chamber. I might be the only one. I do no, like I'm it, does, but I, I like elimination like chamber. And I, and I, I love, think that's and I love great. money in the bank. Money in the bank is yeah. always a good money in the bank's great. Yeah. I, I think 
money in the bank, if we're going to add a fifth, you know, the big four, if we're going to add a five to that, money in the bank would be 100%. Oh, absolutely. Number five. 100%. Absolutely. They, think, they think that too. I mean, they've, they put a lot yeah. of money in the bank. And they're going to be in Vegas but, where they were at SummerSlam next year. So it's going to be huge. Yeah. I feel like, like TLC, it's just overdone. And Hell in the Cell is going the way of that too. It's just, they'll either put 14 Hell in a Cell matches on Hell in a Cell, or they'll do one where it's like, the few just started right instead of yeah. having it as the payoff to the feud, they'll have right. it as hey hell in a cell is like next week let's just throw them in there yeah. or let's just be honest that red cell is fucking trash yeah with the it's red so light and the red dumb. cell terrible it's so okay. distracting like you can't the see red shit. light in the red cell made me have a migraine yes. on tv <laughs> so i can't yes. even imagine people live trying to see yeah. Any, I mean, the Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt Hell in a Cell with that light was like. Oh, I I saw the Red Cage live at a house show, uh, and it was the worst thing at possible. And I was only like ten rows back; like it was, you could not see a damn thing in the ring. <laughs> yeah, I had. Why a, don't they just bring back the old one? Well, you see, I, I had a rant about it when we did the uh, when we did actually the All Out preview because they had a cage match for the Bucks and Lucha Brothers, and I kept saying. If you get if you get a close look every now and then they'll give you a close a close look. It's not painted. It's vinyl covered. So now it doesn't even hurt. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's it's got that coating stuff on it. Like when you go by a, a playground, it's got a chain link fence and it's all black sealed. Yeah. yeah. Except they sealed it red to give it the blood look. But now you grind them against their face all they want to. It ain't gonna cut them. Yeah. It's completely. <laughs> safe. It's like a kid's playground right. now. Whereas before, when it was just steel. No need to blade at all. You put their face on that, yeah. they're they're cutting wide open. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's sad. Or falling through. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's sad. I don't like it. And but at any rate, that's the, that is what it is. So guys, let's let's uh let's jump into this. I know we're uh I was gonna do a couple other things beforehand, but you know what? I don't want to uh, test uh, Mother Nature Internet. So uh, <laughs> let's get into the pay per view and let's have fun with it. I'm I'm excited to have you guys tonight again. For all, for all we disagree with or may not like about what's coming up on Sunday, there are some good stories building to this Sunday. And those of you that are watching this that may not know the timeline, next week after this pay-per-view is the draft. And so I think that actually is a bigger cloud hovering over this right. that, yeah. a lo- that a lot of the decisions they're going to make on Sunday are going to set up for that following Friday, October 1st, and then Monday, October 4th, when these superstars start moving around. So... Um, and one of the things we had, we had a joke about this beforehand, the, the, the pay-per-view is called Extreme Rules. As of right now, there are technically only two matches on this card that have a stipulation that would technically make them extreme. So one of the homeworks I gave these guys is when we get to a match, say what, if you were booking this, what kind of match would you put the competitors in that would make this a must-watch for you? Let's just have a little fun with it, since they're obviously not going to make it fun for us. Let's have some fun with it ourselves. <laughs> so let's, let's go here. So first of all, thank you guys. We're going to be previewing Extreme rules and um i'm excited about it again it's coming this coming sunday september the 26th 8 p.m eastern standard time on the peacock network five pacific time and um it's going to be uh, interesting to set up with how they're going to close out some of these stories and preparing for the draft which why we do the draft right after right before survivor series i don't understand why i don't know what they, they don if you want to get uh specific about this when is the draft happening in professional sports almost immediately after the championship season so why can't you put the draft literally right after WrestleMania? Back, get get back right. get backlash out of the way if you need a backlash pay per view, but then do the draft there. Then they have six months to be on the roster. So when they go into Survivor Series, they actually have some sense of brand loyalty. I'm sorry if I come over to Raw or come over to SmackDown, I've only been there three weeks, and then you expect me to have brand pride going into Survivor Series? This does not well, compute. It, I mean, 2016 back when you know it was really good on SmackDown before they ruined it, uh, you know, whatever. Um, they did the draft in like June yeah. and right when they did the brand split. So when they went into battleground, it was the shield triple threat. Right. right. And then that was it. So yeah. I don't know why they can't do that again, but I don't know. I'd just be too logical. Right. Too I logical. think they should do it at the end of every year. So then going into the Royal Rumble, everything's mixed up and jumbled, you know, and then you don't really know who's going to win or who's going to do what because you just had the draft. That makes Shit's sense. crazy. No one's settled in. 
And it actually, you know, would give you some sort of like, I don't know, surprise. I know they're against that. And they like us knowing everything is going to fucking happen. So yeah. to me, I think that would be because that's kind of when everything picks up. It's going into WrestleMania, so yeah, I, I can definitely see that. If they're not going to do it after WrestleMania, you can definitely do it there. They've gotten better with some surprises lately, but yeah, they're, they're they they want they're so desperate to get viewers, they leak stuff to make us try to watch. Whereas right. if they yeah. if they weren't insecure about that, they would hold their cards completely closed because they know they're going to get a big rating no matter what happens. But but anyway, yeah. so let let's jump into this Extreme Rules. Match number one, uh, and again, right now there's only six matches announced. There could be one or two more made before the weekend. I kind of hope there's not. I kind of hope there's only six and give these people yeah. some time. Let them work. Right. So right. Let's, let's, let's hope and see if they do that. But match number one, uh, Carmella, quote unquote, the most beautiful woman in the WWE, is going to step into the ring with her current arch nemesis, who I am hopelessly devoted and in <laughs> love with, the blonde bombshell from Jersey. Miss Liv Morgan, ladies first, Queen Nikki, hot, cold, or lukewarm? Um, I'm going to go lukewarm only because I want Liv Morgan to just win and get this over with. Okay. It's going to be Liv Morgan. I mean, come on. The way they've been treating Zelina and Carmella lately, it's going to be Liv Morgan. If you were booking this, what kind of match would you make this? <sighs> Well, um, I mean, I have a little bit of faith in Liv Morgan to do a stipulation match. Carmella. Eh? <laughs> um, I'm going to go tables match if I were to if I were to do it. And mm -hmm. this is what harken back to the Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch mm -hmm. tables match. Mm -hmm. So I'd go tables match. Makes sense. RN. I mean, they don't have to really have. I'm sorry. They don't have to have real technique to do a tables match. I think that's what uh, Becky and Alexa did at Extreme Rules yeah. a few years ago, right? Or they TLC did. or something. Yeah. yeah. So ladies can do that. Just need a little bit of gravity. That's all you need. Yeah. That's all you need. Anybody can yeah. fall through a table. Anybody can fall through a table. RN, hot, cold, or warm? Uh, cold. Only because there's not really like either one of these girls. Like I actually do like live a lot, but there isn't anything behind this. And it just kind of like popped up out of nowhere. Uh, I would book it as a first blood match because they're both pretty as hell. And like you said, it doesn't take much skill to bust one of these girls open. Mm. Just a little catch-up packet and you're good to go. Wow. Wow. I, I I hate that they don't do those matches anymore. They used to be so yeah. good when they did right. the first blood matches. And for this, like, too, like, it, it would give you a story to play off on, especially with Carmella being using the most beautiful worlds. Like, yep. you could bust her open, split her face up, and you can ride mm. this feud out. And give us something behind it and actually give them it's not something a bad idea. Fight about. You know what I'm saying? So that's not I know it's idea. never going to happen, yeah. but for fantasy booking, that's what I'm on. Kyle, hot, cold, or warm? Ice cold. Um, kind of just piggybacking off of what RN said. Like, yeah, there's no story at all. Like, literally, Liv hit Carmella in the face once and didn't even break her nose or anything. No mask. It was just, oh, you hit me in the face once in a wrestling match, so now we have to fight. <laughs> so it's like, it's a really dumb story. Like, I, I get what they're going for, but like, I don't know. Liv didn't really, she cut a promo. I, it didn't really suck me in at all. Mm. I like Liv Morgan too, but if, you're, if I'm going to be honest, I, I will predict that the entire Riot Squad will be in AW within a matter of months. So. I honestly, I don't think this match really <laughs> is going to be uh, is going to matter here pretty soon. So mm. uh, that, that's intriguing. I think I don't want to speak for her, but it feels to me like Sarah's done. I mean, I don't I don't know if that's yeah. she. She, she uh, might be. I don't, I don't, really I don't know. know. I, I, I get the feeling, but you could be you could be right unless they do what I think they're trying to do, which is give Liv attention. I'm warm mm -hmm. on the match because I love Liv. Uh, she. I've loved her since she had that match with Charlotte on Raw over a year ago. Uh, she, when she came out, cut that promo on the Queen. I'm like, who the heck are you? Where have you been? And then, yeah. and then she got in the ring, and I was like, okay, Charlotte's gonna squash her to prove a point because it's her versus Rhea and Io coming up and in your house. Liv hung with her for 20 minutes. I was like, mm -hmm. holy cow, where the heck have you been? She was and, red hot at Money oh in the Bank. Gosh. She was red hot. Oh, my gosh, yes. They didn't capitalize fast enough, in my opinion. Yeah, nope. there, there, there they was, never do. Yeah, there was, never a, do. there was a headache on that because they had their eyes on 
Nikki A.S.H. and what she was going to do with the briefcase. That's what they had their attention on. So Liv got lost in the shuffle. Liv and Carmella have been going at it. I always get made fun of in the in the group for being the guy that pays too close attention. They've been going <laughs> at it for about two and a half months. So it's it's been an, again the problem is both of them had, both of them have been off TV for three weeks out of those two months. So they never right. get a chance to continue the story. But if you watch their social media. Them, especially uh, Lib and Zelina, are definitely going at it a lot. So there's a little bit of there. Okay. If I was booking this, to go a little bit off of what RN said, but if I was booking this, I'd go hair match. Mm. Yeah. I want to make you as ugly on the outside as you are on the inside. I'm taking your hair off, girl. And I think if Liv had that ability to take Carmella's hair off, I think that would be... Or... You want to go G.I. Jane? Carmella sneaks one win out, cuts Liv's hair, and Liv turns into a bad A right in front of us. I, I think that would be just as intriguing because an unleashed yeah, Liv Morgan. <laughs> I think that one is better than because I think she'd be the one that could pull that shit off yep. and you wouldn't look and I, at she'd it. She'd do it. She would right. do it. She'd do right. it. She would do it. Whole, yep. wholeheartedly. Kyle, I, I didn't mean to skip you. If you were booking this, what kind of match would you make? I, I promise you I'm not just saying this. I said the same thing, a hair versus hair match, just because like, like you said, it, it plays perfectly into the story, like the vanity of if at all, especially if Carmella Carmella gets shaved, like mm-hmm. yeah, it might make her interesting for once. So <laughs> it's true. She hasn't been interesting since she and our truth split up. Uh, <laughs> Blowout man, they could use a kendo stick to cut open. Yep, they've used a hundred kendo sticks this year. Why not use one more? Exactly. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. All right, let's uh, let's move on to match number two. Match on Raw for the U.S. Championship. Uh, Damian Priest is defending it against his current arch rival Sheamus, who he won the title off of at SummerSlam, and a ret- and a legend winning his way into this match to make it a triple threat match. This is one of our two extreme matches because now the match has a triple threat is no disqualification, which I hate that by the way. Um, and uh, we'll get into that in a second. But now Jeff Hardy has earned his way into this match, so Damian Priest is in there with the master of extreme matches, Jeff Hardy, even though he's 45 years old. Um, Sheamus, who is 41. Damian Priest, who is, I think, about to turn 40. So we got some we got some 4-0 guys in this match, but it should be an interesting match nonetheless. I'm looking forward to watching it, but let's start with you, RN. Hot, cold, or warm? Uh, as cold as it gets, and only because they added Jeff Hardy, like, for no <laughs> fucking reason. Like, and this, this isn't even, like... It, I'm literally I'm just take my hate for Jeff Hardy out of it. Okay. It's just storyline wise, he was just doing shit with with the 24 seven title and literally and nothing, and then all of a sudden, bam, he's in the title picture. Yep. Like regardless of who it is, anybody if they put anybody in, it's like it just made no damn sense. I mean, this has actually been a pretty decent feud. They've actually had some dope shit going on in the ring. And I think it would have been a really good match on a pay-per-view, Yep. but you have to, they, they continue. Jeff Hardy is the fucking natty nine heart of the men's division. Like they ah. always find a way to shoehorn his ass. <sighs> up. He's extreme. He's garbage. I know it's painful. Cause this is garbage. Kyle's, it's Kyle's, garbage. It's Kyle's goat. I know. So <laughs> don't get me wrong. I love, I love 2000 Jeff Hardy too. Not 2021 Jeff Hardy. Yeah. I love 2013, 14 Jeff Hardy and Impact, but you know, same. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Again, yeah. ten different. years ago, almost. Kyle, hot, cold, or warm? Uh, I'm warm on it. Uh, I'm kind of confused because didn't Damian Priest beat Sheamus clean at it, SummerSlam? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so and then Sheamus won a rematch. I guess yeah. It's like it's so. I don't know. It's dumb. I don't like how they do that. Like you, you lose clean, you should have to like jump back of the line. Things. Exactly. So they could have easily done Damian Priest versus Jeff Hardy or anybody else. They have a warehouse full of people they could have. Right. They're just doing rematch after rematch. I guess that's raw in a nutshell, though. Um, right. That being said, I do like watching these guys wrestle against each other, Priest and Sheamus. And I, I like Jeff Hardy. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't love him as much as I used to growing up, but I enjoy seeing Jeff Hardy. And especially if they add some sort of stipulation to this, I think, I think he could add something to it because that's what he does best. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, it should be a good match. Um, the build to it's been so, so, but I'll, I'll enjoy watching it. So RN, who are you picking to win? Uh, Damien. Kyle. Damien. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually hot for this. I'm no, sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm actually hot for this match because, um, I, I, I love Damien Priest. I, I, I love his, I love his character. I love that he's, he's said on a, he recently did a out of character with uh, Ryan Satan. 
or Satin, however you want to call his name. And <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I, I enjoyed that interview. He really said that more and more, the guy on TV is more him than it's ever been, that that's really who he is off screen. And so if that's who he really is, I would love to hang out with him. He seems like a really cool guy. Uh, yeah. Seamus, as RN and I and Kyle, we've talked over and over again, Seamus is MVP of Raw for the last year. I mean, he, every match he's in, every feud he's in, every angle he's been in, he's just sold it. He loves beating people up because it makes them rise. It makes them push back. It makes them get emotional, get angry, which brings out the best of them in their matches. So I really think that um, that he's going to do that. I, I Jeff Hardy's there to to be the go-between of the two and to somehow get a spot in there because now it's the triple threat. It's no disqualification, which, by the way, WWE, I wish you would address this if why can't triple threats be elimination? Because then if someone deliberately uses a chair, they get disqualified, mm-hmm. they're out. Now it's a one-on-one match. The, the triple threat being no DQ for the whole match is just an excuse for you to do crazy stuff with it. I, I've never understood why they do that. Why? Because now the, the champion doesn't even have to be involved to lose the title, which I've always hated that as well. They so, just stole it from ECW. That's all yep. they did. They yeah. ECW yeah. rules. Well, no, ECW, yeah. they would do the three-way dances where it was elimination. Right? Which I liked. Those more common in ECW. Yeah, so. which I liked. I don't, know why they, I don't know why they don't do that anymore. But for this match, because it's no DQ, it gives Jeff Hardy an excuse to do something stupid and jump off a ladder or through a table or, or whatever. But I do think for this, with the draft looming, I think they're going to keep it on Damian. I think Damian's getting a lot of steam, and I think they want to keep him on Raw as the U.S. champion. So I'm predicting Damian's going to retain here and solidify – that his win over Sheamus was not a fluke, and he can beat a legend like Jeff Hardy. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even be surprised if Jeff Hardy took the pin in this match. So right. we'll, we'll see what happens. Nikki, hot, cold, or warm? Okay. Lukewarm and two things. Damian Priest is not 40 yet. He's 38. I, I, knew, he was, I knew he was getting close. That's all. Yeah. 38. Uh-huh. Two, Jeff Hardy's here just to eat the pin, let's be honest, because they're just going to keep this going because it's the WWE, and that's what they do. Yep. Yep. Um, if I were booking this, I would have been a ladder match. No, th- none of this no DQ crap. It's a ladder match. Let's just do it in the grand tradition of B title ladder matches. Let's do it. Yeah, still, yeah. still might be by Sunday. You never know. The bit, it's the grand tradition of it all. Just go do it to make it a ladder match. If just we're do doing it. this, just it's- do it. Why? Um, I think Jeff taking the pin though is going to be because he's going to SmackDown. And we're gonna get Willow the Wisp. You think because Bray Wyatt's that. gone. You think they'll let because him. Bray's gone. You think they'll let him do it? Well, yeah. What what other spooky character do they have other than Alexa Bliss, who pretends she's spooky with her legs open on the floor? He's uh, his, uh, face paint that he did with the eyes on it and shit. Yeah, he still does. He's that. Co- it's Willow's coming. It's either gonna be Willow or they're gonna do some stupid incarnation of Brother Nero that they tried to do before, mm. but then it failed. So. He's going to be Willow. Okay. I like because that. I support that. I'm okay with that. That'll bring ratings because everybody who watched Impact is going to be like, oh my God, Willow's back. Let's go watch SmackDown on Fox because that's our biggest TV deal. Yep. Mm-hmm. Not a bad idea. Anyway, uh, Damian Priest is retaining because Damian Priest has yet to solidify his reign. Yeah. And Sheamus is just going to be there. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Uh, I don't like Seamus, honestly. Nice uh, guy. Great guy, but don't like him. But yes, Jeff Hardy will eat the pen. All right. Looking over here in the chat, uh, Two Sweet Pod says, don't make fun of Natty Nightheart. Um, you go watch the Mute RN video. You'll get all the made fun yeah. of you want. Um, you clearly wow. haven't seen that, have you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, how much can she even make like eyebrow motions anymore? No, uh, I no, put no, that no, in the no, rant, no, too. No, that's a good point. That's in the rant. Yep. Can she move her face? No. Uh, no. No. Kyle's, Kyle says Kyle says Jeff's getting the win. Kyle, put the bottle down, please. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, and, I'm okay with him losing if we get Willow. So. Yeah. And uh, Blowout Man is just chatting it up and saying all kinds of cool stuff. Aloha to you, my friend. And, yeah, Aloha Man, tell us what he'll tell us he thinks going to win these matches too, by the way. Okay. Can I say what my stipulation would have been for that match? Oh, yeah, for sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, tables match because – that's how Sheamus won his first WWE title. Mm. And that could have been a thing they could have played off of like, oh, hey, I, hey fella, uh, I lost you at SummerSlam, but now you're going to be in my dojo. You're going to be in my specialty uh, like tables it. match. I plus, like it. plus Jeff Hardy and his history with tables matches. So it could have been fun, but they made it 
not fun. So mm. no, knowing them, but they'll make it a Brock street fight for Damien priest or something. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So they'll have, who knows what they'll have out there. That's completely offensive and wrong. All right. <laughs> Moving on to the next match, a match that, uh, I, I, I'm going to let you guys just talk about it, but I'm excited to talk about it. And that is the Uso penitentiary is opening up one more time to the returning Street Profits who are back together and they have been getting screwed out of matches against the Bloodline. Now they get them two on two and they get them at Extreme Rules for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Uso's trying to hold on to their seventh title reign and the Street Profits are trying to get a hold of their third title reign. They're one-time Raw, one-time SmackDown. Now they're trying to get their third, second SmackDown Championship reign. Kyle, we'll start with you this time. Hot, cold, or warm? Uh, I'm warm on it. Uh, I think it'll be a great match. I'm a tag team wrestling mark, so I'm definitely going to enjoy it. Um, the storyline's been okay, but that's kind of a lot of what WWE is nowadays. Mm-hmm. It's okay. So um, I'm looking forward to the match. It'll be a good match. They've had a few matches before, haven't they? This isn't their first this match. This is, they ha- uh... they, they've had, uh, I think they've each had. WWE loves to do this. I think they've each faced the other 50 50. Yeah. They've each had one-on-ones with with the brothers. Yeah. And then they had yeah. the three or four on four bloodline versus them and two other people match. I think wasn't that's it. It was yeah. Roman and the Usos versus was it Finn and the street profits or was it, it was supposed to be, it was, it was the street yes. profits and the Mysterios versus the Usos yes. and alpha. I think. Mm-hmm. I think so it was. Yeah. I think that's what I'm thinking. Oh, oh, and, oh, I'm sorry. And the Usos did get a match with the, or the Street Profits did get a match with the Usos, and Roman interfered and choked them out. That, okay. There it is. That did happen. There it is. So this is the rematch, and I'm hoping Roman is barred from ringside. But Kyle, if you could make a stipulation to make this more exciting and make, get you up to hot, what would you do? I'd make it a ladder match for sure. I love tag team ladder matches. Yes. Um, that's how the Street Profits won their first NXT tag team titles. The Usos. I feel like the Usos haven't been in that many ladder matches, which is crazy to me. It seems like they would have been in a lot, but yeah. I think that would be a really exciting match if it was a ladder match. Mm-hmm. Kyle in the chat says you're cold for this match. That's why you're not on the show tonight, Kyle. All <laughs> right. <laughs> can only have one Kyle per show. Absolutely. I, I am... I'm hot for this match. I, I, there, the first match they had before Roman got involved, I said since WrestleMania when Jimmy was about to come back, I said when they come back, they need a tag team that's the yin to their yang that can pull that that they can pull something out of them the way the Dudleys had the Hardys and Edge and Christian. The Usos don't have the New Day facing them anymore. They need a tag team that can pull out that side of them and they can pull that side of them out. And I immediately said, it's the Street Profits. They can they can easily become that. They're, they've always been, we want the smoke and the solo cups and, and parting with the crowd. They need a team that brings the viciousness out of them. Enter the Usos. And th- I, I hope, honestly, this rivalry goes off and on till WrestleMania and let it climax there. These teams can easily tell some really cool stories together and have some really good matches together. I am hot for the match for that. I think um, I th- I, it's hard for me to pick it. I, I think the Usos are going to retain. I think they're gonna. Hold, I think they're gonna hold on to it one more time I, because there's no stipulation yet. Uh, they can easily cheat and hold on to it again, and then post draft we'll see what happens with them. I hope they keep them on the same brand though, because I really do think they can make that magic. I agree with Kyle. I would have made it a ladder match. I, I, w- I would have made it um, where they could where they could have that. They the last ladder match they were both in uh, was when Jimmy tore his ACL. So uh, I'm hoping they whatever they do he's that he stays safe. Um, but uh, I, I'm excited about. it. I think it's gonna be a fun match to watch. Nikki, hot, cold, or warm? Um, warm because it's going to be a good match. Um, I, it's pretty obvious the Usos will retain. Obviously, because Roman. And I have a feeling. I don't know if it's going to happen. I have a feeling Street Profits will move to Raw. You really think? You really that. think Roman will help again I, with his match later? Anyway, stipulation: mm. steel cage. Okay. Keeps Roman out. Mm. Well, in WWE's mind, it keeps Roman out. Really, he could just go over the cage, but open the door, or open the door, or just open the door. Ask the ref to open the door, and but in WWE's mind, they're like, Roman can't get in the cage. Mm -hmm. Ah. (laughs) But yeah, I would make it a steel cage match, um, just because somebody, one of the four, will jump off that cage. 
Montez. Yeah. At least once. Montez. Oh, yeah. Montez will jump off the cage. <laughs> so it has to be a still cage match. Mm. Come on. That'd be great. But um, I think the Usos will retain. Honestly, he won't need to climb it. The way, his vertical leap will get to the top of the right. cage already. Yeah. <laughs> My He'll gosh, go that up. dude can fly. That dude can He'll fly. go from like the top rope to the top of the cage. Yeah, he will. Easy. Easy will. Be like a video game. Yeah. RN, hot, cold, or warm? Uh, warm, like she's like Nikki said, it's, it's going to be a dope match. We already know that. I got the Usos retaining as well because of the draft, and I would have made it a TLC match. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Because mm. that way you get a little that. bit of everything in it. You can get uh, Montez flying, you can get the Usos flying, you can get, uh, I always forget the other guy's name. Jimmy J. Angelo. Oh, Angelo. Angelo Dawkins, Dawkins yeah. Dawkins. Earth, the curse Dawkins, of greatness. Put somebody through some tables and shit, so you, you kind of get a little bit of the strength and the speed and shit and everything and involved. And if Roman has to get involved, you come in with a chair and beat the shit out of somebody. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Blowout Man says, I'm hot for this match. Kyle says, Street Profits are best when they're only used for, when they're being used for exposition, whatever that means. That's, I, that's yeah. a bunch of nonsense. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Mm, I, I think the Street no. Pro- I think the Street Profits are, are this generation's Harlem Heat, and they can easily hold on to some, uh, some steam if they let them. I think Vince loves them. I think Vince loves the idea of them together. I'm just afraid that Montez is a bigger star than Angelo. And it's only a matter of time. Agreed. That's what I'm afraid like, of. Montez is a future world champion, in my opinion. I think he is, too. Yeah. So that's what I'm afraid of. We'll see. But I love the TLC match idea, but usually that's a closer. I hope they let him go a few more times. That's all. But I see your point. It's a, it's a good argument, for sure. All right. Next match. Th- this, man, this is interesting. The queen, Charlotte Flair, defends her Raw Women's Championship against... Five feet of fury, but now clo- cloaked in whatever mystery this is. I know, I know. Alexa Bliss on the Monday Night Raw. I will start this one. I'm just warm for it. I'm warm for two reasons. Because underneath the facade and underneath the gimmick, and I know why Alexa's doing this. She's actually, she's even said this is the most fun she's had. Without Bray there, I know it feels weird. but Because she stole it. She didn't steal it. They made her keep it. She didn't steal it, <laughs> but she stole it. But even but the point is when you take even even with this stuff when the bell yeah. rings she's still Alexa Bliss and the girl can go. She's incredibly talented. She's one of the she she's only a phone call away from being a breakout in Hollywood. The girl can act and better. The girl can react. Everything that is said to her or done to her, her facial expressions, her body language, she will be on the silver screen very soon. She will be making ratings, and she will be selling box office tickets. She's that good. The Queen Charlotte Flair, everybody knows how I feel about her. I respect her. I love her. She can hang with half the men in the, in the wrestling world. She is the greatest female wrestler of all time, in my opinion. So yes. the two, you put the two of them in the ring together. They're gonna do it. They're gonna have a great match. They'll pull something out of each other. If you look, if you think back to was it three years ago they had their match for the Raw Women's Championship, and it did not make sense looking at them standing toe to toe. But man, they told a great story, and it was a great match. It, it was at any point you thought Alexa was gonna win this, so it was really intriguing. I think this is this is interesting, and this is where I want y'all's opinion. Where is Extreme Rules happening? I have no idea. I never know where they're at. Col- Columbus, Ohio. Alexa. Oh, Bl- damn. She's losing, bro. Alexa Bliss She's is losing. hometown. <laughs> She's gone. Alexa Bliss is hometown. Well, no, no. <laughs> Alexa Bliss is from parts unknown. Okay, guys? <laughs> let's, let's get well, this straight before we move on. I, You know what? Because Bama Dave is here, I'm going to hold my tongue on what I have to say about the parts unknown thing. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> mm. Mm-mm. Your imagination, folks. If you want me to take the headphones off, let you talk for a minute, then you give me a... No, a I'm good. <laughs> just, you just, know what? I'll just say, plus her heart. Oh, That's well, all I got to say. I get you. But so, I, so I'm actually really torn on it. I think, again, for the draft, Charlotte's going to keep it. But I think Alexa will have a good showing in her hometown. Maybe, maybe she'll get screwed out of it, and uh, they'll keep her looking a little bit strong. But I think the mm-hmm. Queen's going to retain for the draft and because Raw can't afford to lose her right now. I'm sorry. But they... They need the queen. They need the queen. They got. They got. They got Becky. They got Bianca on SmackDown. They might have a returning Sasha when Bailey gets back. Where's she gonna be? 
Raw can't lose a big power star like Charlotte. They got to keep her. So I think the title is going to stay on the queen. Nikki, how cold or warm? Uh, ice cold. Ice cold. And if this was my stipulation, I know WWE would never do it. I'd say death match with Charlotte Flair <laughs> going over. And this gimmick would go out the window, but no, because the children think they're spooky because it's October and they're selling too much stuff. Mm. Anyway, um, in my heart, Charlotte has to retain this. Like, she has to. But I wouldn't put it past him because, you know, the Nikki ASH Mm -hmm. experiment. They'll be like, oh, Alexa, we could sell more of your overpriced crap to the children. So, here, have a belt so then we can make it a spooky belt and then sell that to the children at Christmas. Mm. Yes. Um, again, it would be a death match with light tubes. And piranhas. Wow. And piranhas and sharks with freaking laser beams on their heads. And a Punjabi <laughs> prison around everything. Uh, uh, also, if we're just gonna, if we can't get the sharks, the light tubes work, well, Charlotte could just smash one and then, you know. Uh, 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 yeah, the ch- the you chat know. watch it. The chat y'all like- saw so the chat- Y'all saw Nick Gage and, and David Arquette. We could do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. Very similar. Death match. So, I say the, the chat, Death match. The, the, say the chat loves your 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 suggestion there. I, I, I didn't get my stipulation. I would have made this falls count anywhere. Um, I, I, I like light tubes. For the sake of the story, I think it makes sense. Alexa can drag her back to her playground. Charlotte can try to beat her in the ring. They can use special effects backstage, use some pre-recorded stuff. The girls can walk back. Let's to the be back. real. They're just going to beat each other with their stupid dolls. Right. I hope so. Oh, yeah. Voodoo stuff. So Alexa hits Charlie and Charlotte gets hurt. <laughs> and then um, a real demon comes out of the ring and then swallows Alexa. You guys Because are... she's been messing around with the demons too oh, much. Man. You guys are talking like you're joking, but like I'm legitimately. Not... No, I'm not. <laughs> that that I'm could not... be a thing that happens. Am I. Does this look like the face of somebody who's joking? Oh, Doesn't look God. pretty serious to me. She's, uh, she's, you know what? She's been messing around with the spirits. Just saying. <laughs> For the sake of Nikki, I hope that when the draft happens, Alexa comes out on Friday night on SmackDown after getting drafted and says, "Sorry, guys, I had a case of the Mondays." So. <laughs> No, because they're sponsored by Snickers. So she's like, "Sorry, guys, I just needed a Snickers," and then holds the bar up like. Ah. This year-long arc has been a whole Snickers ad. Right. Yeah. But, you know, Bray's creation just went down in flames because it's a Snickers ad. Yeah. yeah. I, w- I wonder, and I'll let you two guys, you know, harp in on this too. Every time Alexa gets pushed to her limit, it's like the real her starts coming back out. You talk, mm-hmm. about, you talk about somebody that can push her, Charlotte can. I wonder if Charlotte gets that figure eight on her, if that's enough to snap Ooh. Alexa out of this. Maybe, and maybe bring the real girl back out of her. I don't know. Or snap her Phibia. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Anyway, Kyle, hot, cold, or warm? Um, I'm pretty cold on it. Like, I don't know. I'm t- kind of tired. Like, I think it'll be a pretty good match. I kind of like them. I just, I'm, I'm kind of tired of both of them right now. I'm tired of Alexis' character. I'm, a, I'm tired of Charlotte. Like, I, I, Charlotte's great, but for whatever reason, whenever I see her, I'm just like, oh, because like, I don't know. It, it seems like her whole character is premised on how many times she's lost the title. Mm. So. <laughs> I hate that, by the way, how they like paint this, like how many times you've won the title. Is, but you've exactly. lost it that many too. But you've exactly. lost it. Exactly. It should be like how many defenses you have, or at least like how long you've held the title. 100%. Like she, Sasha Banks is like, what, a six time champion, but she's yes. only defended it like once. So, And she's only <laughs> held her for like two weeks at a time. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. That, for that for that reason, I could, my, my prediction here is Alexa Bliss wins Ooh. just so we can pad Charlotte's number of reigns some more. Mm. Plus, like Nikki said, it's Halloween. The, the creepy doll. It's gonna be a cash cow and the cassette and the, not concession stand. Whatever the merch stand. Mer- merch stand. Mer- merch yeah, there it is. Stand, yeah. Thank you. Gotta uh, hawk it to the children. Oh yeah, Lily gets her own little belt too. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So for that reason, I think Alexa Bliss is winning this one, and I would make it a uh, a Lily on a pole match. <laughs> so Lily on a forklift. And again, you're you're not kidding. You're serious. No. Oh yeah, because yeah. uh, you know, Alexa, I like her powers. If Lily's too high then it's not gonna the signal's oh, not gonna dude. reach her so first ever women's inferno match let's go let's do it <laughs> and then Man. she's pushed into the fire mm-hmm. yes yep. and goes Kaluri! <laughs> yep straight to tennessee or wherever <laughs> their next show is wow okay. and then she shows up burnt like the fiend did that one time yeah right yep Or back 
in full circle. RN, hot, cold, or warm? Uh, warm, only because it's going to be a dope match, and I love Alexa. I love the queen, too. I mean, I agree with you. She is the greatest women's wrestler of all time. And the thing about the range and shit, like, if everybody, if, if the, she wasn't always put on a show with a bunch of women that fucking sucked, she wouldn't have to get the belt that much. And that's, <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's be true. Honest. They, they put the belt on her because the, that whatever show she's on, the women division is ass. So they have to put it on her. Well, it's ass because she gets all the TV time and nobody else gets time to develop and become a credible challenger. Well, so. It's ass because they have to be superheroes and spooky dooky people to sell merch on Raw. Well, it's ass because all those women fucking suck. Like Anna just- Brooke should be champion right now. How dare you, sir? <laughs> yeah, ass. Nikki, Your ass. ass. It should be Nikki A-S-S. <laughs> ass. And then you got poor Rhea Ripley who's stuck on an island at the uh, damn show God. with Spooky Dookie and Superhero, right. and now she's got well, a belt. She, with I mean, let's keep it. Let's keep it one hundred. She's ass too, because you don't know what Rhea Ripley is. Like, yeah. what is yeah, her? She know who they, she they, is. Who is she? They've ruined her. Well, yeah, they've ruined they've, her. Exactly. So, you, and then you stuck the only two real threats you have is Nia and. Shana, and you put them in a, a ass tag team. Yeah. Well, okay, not let's anymore. be honest. Not every two days, not anymore. So. Nia is ass. She's ass. She is the assiest Nia of the ass. ass. But she's not because you know ass. why? She injures all the other people who are yeah. ass. Yeah. You're right, but when her and Shana are together and actually clicking, they give them time to do shit. They're actually not ass. They're actually good. Because Shana does ninety eight percent of the work. Because if a bullfrog had wings, he wouldn't bump his ass when he jumped. We know that. But I'm just saying, when they're together, they're good. I've never heard that one either. (laughs) But you also take two good women and put them in a tag team, and they're not in the title picture. So you don't have any choice but to put the belt back on Charlotte. And I've been waiting for this Shayna versus Charlotte. Let's go. Facts. Let's go. Facts. Shayna's my favorite wrestler, all women's wrestler right now, whatever. But but no, I think I would have made it a casket match. So then that way we can kill this fucking Alexa Bliss <laughs> yeah. character and get Alexa Bliss, the real Alexa Bliss back. And then can we light it on it. fire? Like Randy Orton? Yeah. <laughs> when you, and then we can get her really back to being the second best in the division because to me it goes Charlotte, then Alexa, if I'm being, if you really put a gun to my head. Becky and all them are all right, but I think that Alexa has – she can be whatever you need her to be a sympathetic baby face yep. or a bitch ass heel that you mm-hmm. want to hate so to me it goes she, charlotte alexa and then everybody else she should come back as the american badass and to limp biscuit music and then yeah and, and <laughs> no, no no it's okay let's be honest she's gonna come out to evanescence next yeah, that's because nice. yes she's gonna come out because she's a reborn spooky yeah now <laughs> after her casket's lit on fire yeah no, I, I agree. It's the only girl on Raw, and unfortunately she's injured right now, the only girl that can step up to Charlotte and give her a fight is Asuka. That's it. That's it. Asuka? Who's yeah. this Asuka you speak of? I know. Who, who, yeah. Who's Asuka? Who's Asuka? Who's Asuka? Yeah, she's she's hurt right who? now. So they kept her off. Oh, TV. is she? Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, she's That makes hurt. me feel better. Yeah. I thought they just forgot about her. Honestly. No, yeah, she's hurt. No. She's hurt. But yeah, you, you can even tell. There, there was a match... Not long ago, of course, the, the infamous match she had with Nia a month ago, which we all watched 15 times because of how real it got. But there, there's matches with Charlotte. When somebody will get in the ring with her and they won't do what she tells them to do or they'll half sell something or half register something, and Charlotte's face changed. She gets pissed. She's like, I'm in here busting my tail. Why won't you step up? Let's let's actually right. try to do something. Like, and, and she even went on record to say on, on um, Out of Character with Ryan, that the reason she held up that finger to all the people at Money in the Bank is because how dare you spit on this match? Rhea is about to show y'all something here. She said it wasn't Queen character. It was, we're about to burn the house down, and y'all are going to thank us for it, so shut up and watch the match. And they did. The match was awesome. That was a great it match. It was a great they match. They turned it. So, so, yeah, for all the for all the reasons that I agree with you, Kyle, for all the reasons that she's always around the belt, it's because who the heck can step up and be her? Nobody. Right. She's that good. So, I'd just rather her have longer reigns. That, that's oh, 100%. All I yeah. 100%. Exactly. Give her a Roman Reigns bloodline style reign. Oh, yeah. yes. I've been wanting that oh. for her forever. Her longest reign, I looked it up, her longest reign is 130 days. That's it. That's crazy. That's stupid. <laughs> Yeah, it's because they can't book a woman long term. Right. And it's, no, it's because they do the breaking case of emergency shit where, like you said, yeah. they try these experiments on shit and yep. they see his ass and doesn't work. So like, fuck, we're Charlotte. Exactly. We're gonna do exactly. That's, that's what happens every time. 
Exactly. If you go back and look at every reign she's had, it was some mediocre bullshit. Right. And before she got the belt back again, the it all, never yeah. fucking fails. The only exception was Bailey because it was Bailey's time. That was the right. only exception I would say. Maybe you could call Sasha in there too, but that's it. So I mean, how many yeah. times did she lose it to Sasha and then win it back like two weeks later though? Twice. And even when Bailey won it, didn't she? Didn't Charlotte like just win the title and then Bailey cashed in? Isn't that what yeah, happened? Yeah, so it's like, like why? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Literally the same night. Yeah. Like little things like that that they throw <laughs> exactly. in there is unnecessary. Exactly. Right. She's she's their safety net. In all fairness, her dad was too. Where's Rick when we right. need him? That was exactly well, what the, it was. Even like well, you said, with the losses. Yeah. It gives the, it gives the person that beat her yeah. credibility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So get props the title back up, and then whoever beats Superwoman, they get that's supposed to give them yeah. a rub. So like yep. I said, it's let's just be honest. Charlotte in the next five years, Charlotte will not be in the WWE anymore. No. I don't even think it'll be five years. I, whenever her contract... Probably is, three. Probably yeah. three. They probably signed her for five. She'll yeah. be there for three. Yeah. Right. She needs she needs a couple of dance partners. I mean, she's she said that her and Becky have unfinished business. They want to tell another story now that they're different people now. She said that she and Sasha, we know the kind of matches we can have. We want to go at it again. Her and Bailey were, were touch and miss. They haven't had a true story. And God right. forbid, why the heck you acted the way you did? But guys, Charlotte versus Tessa Blanchard would steal any pay per view. But nobody's gonna touch Who would her. Would touch her though. Nobody's gonna. Nobody's touch gonna her. touch her. Nobody's gonna touch yeah. her. So, but no, with the built-in story of who their dads are, it's perfect. Right. It's absolutely perfect, but yeah, they're not gonna. That'd be great. Wow, yeah. yeah. I didn't even think about that. They're not gonna touch Ain't her. Nobody gonna touch her. And and, and and Tess is exactly ten years younger than her. Exactly ten years younger. So really? yeah, it's crazy. So it's like little sister. They grew up together. Charlotte's so, an old bitch, isn't she? Thirty four or thirty five yeah. now. Yeah. Becky's- I mean, you know what? Maybe she she'll just go wrestle wherever after she's done. She doesn't actually have to sign anywhere. No. Her and Andrade could go get married and have kids, and then she could just show up random shows and just wrestle whoever she wants. Be the Rock. Yeah. Or John Cena, or whoever. She doesn't have to show up every week. No. Yeah. All right, let's move forward because we've given her way too much screen time. All right, <laughs> as she, she doesn't get enough already. Exactly. Next, next match for the Universal Championship: Roman Reigns defends his title at Extreme Rules versus not just the Prince. Now the Demon Finn <laughs> Balor has returned for this match. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I, I was I was second guessing myself. I was like, "Oh, it's a heartbeat. It's a demon. It's a demon." I had to like play it back three times because stupid audio. It was just a boo, boo. I was like, "No, come on, thump the building with this. Let us feel it. Let us." But mm-hmm. but of course they didn't do it. But no, sure enough, that's what it was. The, the demon appeared in Madison Square Garden, and now we're gonna get Demon Finn Balor versus Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. Uh, of course, Paul Heyman will be in Roman's corner, and of course. Brock Lesnar's out there looming because he and Roman have a title match coming up uh, at Crown Jewel. Or they have said if Finn wins this, they will go to Crown Jewel and the title does not have to be on the line. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we'll Sure, see. Jan. Yeah. So, sure. <laughs> yeah. So we'll yeah, we'll talk about that. But all right. Kyle, you start this time. Hot, cold, or warm? Uh I'm warm on it, mainly because uh I would be hot if they didn't spoil the uh, result. So uh, yeah, it'll look, it'll be a good match. Like, like a lot of the other matches on this card will be a good match, but the result almost, I mean, kind of takes me out of it a little bit. And I'll personally, I don't like the demon be, I, I think him bringing back the demon kind of reverses everything that he did in right. NXT. I agree. Cause he went to NXT and he's like that demon stuff I was doing and, and SmackDown and raw. That was Hollywood bullshit. Like, no, I'm a real wrestler. I'm on Broadway now and NXT. I don't need any of that spectacle and the lights and the paint. I don't need it. I'm Finn Balor. I'm gonna wear black tights and wear a black jacket and come out there and win every match. And he did. He was a dominant champion for a long time. He was cutting great promos. He had a great believable character. Yep. And now he's back to doing what he was doing before. Like it just because you keep forgetting that NXT doesn't exist on Raw. And yeah. At least That's this time point. he's not smiling. At least this time he's not smiling. Yeah. Not smiling now. Yeah. Not yet. Not no. yet. They give it a few weeks. But uh, yeah. Other than that, yeah, warm on that one. And I would make it a uh, a cage match. Well, this one is actually Extreme Rules. 
So no, anything, nope. go, anything. I would goes. make it a cage match. You would make it a cage yeah, match. Somebody. I would make it an extreme. What was the one that Dean Ambrose and Chris Jericho had? The Ambrose oh, Asylum. Oh, I would make yes. it that. Ambrose yeah. Asylum match. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there it there is. There you go. <laughs> All right, RN, hot, cold, or warm? Uh, warm, borderline, almost cold. Because with with the Brock Lesnar shit looming and everything, like we know he's not going to win this. And the interruption and the storytelling, like I wish they had just ran this with them throughout without having the interruptions. I think I would have felt better about it. But again, then, of course, the no surprise thing. Why the fuck did you debut The Fiend the week before the pay-per-view? Like, if they had just let that ride and he came out with that, the roof would have blown off oh, the fucking my building. my gosh, yes. And nobody knew. Oh, and I, feel the, I kind of feel the same way about Apron, but I'm the NXT guy, so I know the NXT doesn't exist on Raw and SmackDown, so that character never happened. He just replayed from what he was. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't exist. He just flopped over. Well, to correct you, the, the black and gold doesn't exist. This NXT does. This NXT. Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. see. Yeah. We'll see. We haven't seen anybody yeah. get called yeah. up yet. Yeah. We'll see. That's true. But as of now, yeah, the black and gold doesn't exist. So that Finn Balor character never happened. But mm. And like I said, with the Brock Lesnar shit, you know he's not winning. And let's be honest, Roman Reigns probably not losing until WrestleMania, if that. Mm. So Agreed. And I would have made this... Um, I would have made this a uh, last man standing match or it's, or I was, I was torn between the last man standing match and it's a missing match with the fiend. Like you can't make the fiend. Tap I out. like last man standing because the demon won't die. I like right. that. No. Right? I like that. That's, that's good. And I would have just been Roman doing everything he can using everything he can to put you Finn would, down yeah. and he just keep undertaker and back up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, so yeah, I, I, I went with last man standing match. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go next and, and I, I, I'm hot for it. I, I, I get, Okay, let's throw it out there. What if they swerve us? I love it. I'd be all. I'd like, I, I'd be, I'd like it. As because, much as I love this Roman Reigns, and I think this is the best he's been in years, and I can actually say I like Roman Reigns, which I've never said in his entire fucking career. I hate it because I was they, supposed to. <laughs> right. I, if if they swerve us and Finn wins, like I'm gonna lose my, I'm gonna lose my shit. Yeah. Like, I'll literally lose my shit. Yeah, I I, I have this weird feeling. Maybe, just maybe, they do want all the attention to be about what the heck's going to happen between the three with Paul. I, I, I really wonder if that's all there is. But Brock said, I want a title match. So right. that's the one thing I keep coming back to. Brock said, I want my title match. It's not about you, Paul. I don't want you. I want what's on that boy's shoulder. So that, so that being said, I, I agree with you guys. Logic dictates Roman should retain here and then face uh, Brock at Crown Jewel with Paul caught in the middle. Hopefully by then, I mean the story has been gold from day one. Right. Um, so I'm interested to see you know where this goes and oh my gosh the 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 level of of storytelling this has been from day. Do you guys can you guys remember how you felt when you saw Roman talking to um uh whatever the guy's name was. And then all of a sudden the camera just moved a little bit to the left and Paul Heyman sitting there next to him. And our minds yeah. were like, are you freaking kidding me? This is actually happening. And then immediately a year and a month and a half later, now we're, now we're building to what we all hope to see, which is, you know, Roman versus Brock with, with Paul caught in the middle. So, I mean, just beautiful storytelling. I'm loving every second of it. I do think it's going to be an awesome match. I think Finn is going to once again just show, as he always does, why he is one of the greatest wrestlers of our generation. And he and Roman are going to tear the house down. It's going to get intense at times. I love the last man standing match idea. Honestly, I would do an I quit match because the demon won't quit either. Mm-hmm. And, and I would love to hear Roman almost utter those words, I quit. I think, And I think Finn could push him there. But we, we know Paul's going to distract Finn maybe at one point and we know yeah. and we know the Usos aren't far behind either. So unless they lock him in a cage, they're gonna find a way to get involved in this. So Roman's gonna retain through shenanigans. I wonder is the is there any stipulation in here that Brock Lesnar shows up extreme rules? Is there any way possible he intimidates Roman somewhere somehow at this match? I don't know. I think the money's up. right. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. he shows up. You think he's gonna be there? Yeah. I I, I think he hasn't been Cause you know he does like four or five damn days a, a year, so he's only done what two. Mm. So maybe I I feel like they I feel like it's in his nature to sh- to wait till he wrestles, but but we'll see we'll see. Yeah, Nikki, hot cold or warm? Uh, I'm cold because this is going to be the first time the demon loses. Mm. 
He lost. And to I'm Samoa mad Joe about it. Yeah, he did. He did yeah, he, well, he did lose to Samoa Joe. That's but right. But remember, the, NXT doesn't exist. So. In the big on the big stage. Yeah. This is the first time, and um, I'm not happy about it because Demon Finn's the only thing I have now. After you know. Somebody got released. <laughs> so they this never. is all I have left. Mm, yeah, thank you. This is it. Actually, did he just and... quit? Did he just walk? No, away? I was talking about Bray. Oh, Bray, you know, Bray. now that Bray's gone, I only have Demon Finn left. Thank you. And um, unfortunately, he's going to lose. Because, of course, Brock can't wrestle unless Brock gets a title because he's Brock Lesnar and he needs all the money on a fucking pulse. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. I, I, that's my one. That's my one. That's all right. Anyway, I hate Brock. Really? Anyway, <laughs> um, sure? he's a homophobe. He's a homophobe and we don't buy that in our house. No. Anyway, um, I'm mad about it. I think it should be an Inferno match. That way, if Heyman tries to stick his nose where it doesn't belong, his eyebrows will get singed off. That's a little harsh, don't you think? <laughs> wow. Just a friendly Jewish man trying to make a living. Friendly? <laughs> friendly. Are we going friendly? <laughs> the, thing about, the thing I hate about all of this is they, they pulled the trigger on this way too soon. I wish Brock had came back and been on Raw and Heyman managed them both. Mm. Yeah, got it at SummerSlam or WrestleMania where they finally had to come face to face. That's a good idea. I mean, why don't we do the whole can they can they coexist? Exactly, exactly. We've never done that before. Talk about I never talk about me- talk about. Yeah, I was gonna say talk about mega powers or two man powers. Yeah, but, yeah just uh, let it see if they can coexist. Even though Brock looks like melted mayonnaise left in the summer sun, <laughs> and Roman Reigns. Well, Roman Reigns, we all know what you are. Nah, so I think well, are they not the best two candidates to pull off a two man power trip? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. Oh yeah. I think I think I think this I think Viking Brock is scarier than the old Brock. This dude's. I don't like ponytail Brock. You what? Because like he's got a man bun and he wears scary. tight Jason no. Dean jeans. No, it's now it's I don't even care to shave or cut my hair. That's how much I don't care about myself. How he much less do I like care about you? In a different. It's it called like, he lives in a cave. It's like a double ponytail. He yeah. looks like a twelve year old girl. Right. It's probably because, like, Sable doesn't let him in the house. So, like, he's got to oh, live in a cave. That's funny. I mean, why is that not a storyline? That is interesting. Sable won't even let him in the house because he's that big of a animal. <laughs> so he has to live with the animals. That's funny. Wow. Wow. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Let's move on to what could potentially be the main event. And, yes, I do have the video graphic of it because she deserves it. Um, the SmackDown Women's Championship on the line, Becky Lynch, the man, defending it against the EST of the WWE, Bianca Belair, and because she's my girl, I'm starting this one, and I am hot for this match. Um, spoiler alert, I will probably wait a few months to do it, but if we ever do a top 10 women's, uh, favorite women's, uh, segment show, Becky Lynch is number one for me. The girl, ever since the man, I mean, I was I was sort of a fan in the early part of her her coming up to the main roster. I had to go back and watch a lot of it because I didn't really get back into wrestling until about 2018. But when the when the switch flipped and the real her came out and the and the real attitude and the real pushback to authority and slapping Stephanie and slapping Vince and slapping Triple H, I'm like. There's a Stone Cold Steve Austin in a woman's body, and I love this girl. This girl's going to buck the system. This girl's going to put on matches. This girl's going to take the mic and say whatever she wants, and eventually she's going to get so big she can do what she wants, and she has gotten that place. Be- Becky Lynch is she is so groundbreaking for everything she's done, not only for women's wrestling but in the Rivets Evolution, but now she literally is calling her shots. This entire turn was her idea. She said, if I come back, I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to do it for Bianca. She said that when I get when I get done with Bianca, Liv Morgan needs to be a champion in the near future. She wants to work with her. And they truly trust her because when has she been wrong about anything she's done? Never. 
So they trust her. And so I, I believe they're going to they're gonna unleash her to do what she wants to do. I love Bianca Belair. I said this on our SummerSlam preview. I love her faith. I love her character. I love her work ethic. I love her athletic ability. I love her toughness. I love everything she stands for with her husband. They, she is a power wrestler. She is an awesome wrestler. So skilled. So, so lovable. And Becky... The heel turn was questionable. I wasn't 100% sold on it. But you can't deny they're booing Becky and they're double cheering Bianca more than than they were. And she's getting over more and more everything. With the draft looming, the man's going to retain. I, 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 think, I don't think Fox wants to lose her or potentially oh, lose her. Now, no. now, that being said, if they have to pick between Roman and Becky, they're probably going to pick Roman. But... If they can, if they can afford to keep both, they'll try to keep both. I don't know. Keep them both. I know. Keep if both. they can afford to, that they may say you can't do that. It's an actual draft. We you get first pick. You want Roman? Then we want Becky. And they might do that. And if they do that, then Bianca's got to win. But so this that's why this one's a coin flip for me, and that's why I'm going to be on the edge of my seat watching it. But I do think the the, the story was great. Hey. Bianca, you weren't ready for me, but I was ready for you. I've been watching this whole time. I know how good you are. That's why I sucker punched you and man slammed you and got you in third 26 seconds. Now she has time. It ain't going to happen this time. They're going to put on an awesome match. This is going to be so much fun to watch, and I'm looking forward to it. Nikki, hot, cold, or warm? Um, I'm warm Uh, because Becky will retain. <laughs> um, I love Becky. Don't get me wrong, but... I think either way, WWE knows they're screwed. Without whatever the outcome is. That's so true. Because if Bianca loses again, people are going to be pissed. If Becky loses, people are going to be pissed. So either way, unless there's shenanigans, Good. somebody's going to get mad. Um, it's not the first I time. Could see this, I could see this going two ways. Um, the first way, Becky wins. Bianca goes to Raw. And faces Charlotte Flair because there's nobody else to face her. The Spree Prophets go with. But if who knows, maybe Becky loses and Becky and Seth head on over to the red brand. We get Becky and Charlotte. Seth has to go take care of the baby. So, you know, he's going to go too. And, um, you know, that happens. But I, I do think Becky will retain. Bianca will with the Street Profits, head over to Raw. So Charlotte has somebody that is not some creepy girl. And if, and you know what, if Alexa wins, I hope Bianca takes it right off of her. <laughs> you know. Anyway, um, this match, I know this is going to be controversial. I don't even think it needs a stipulation. And if you were to do one Iron Woman match. This early? Yes. This could be it. I no, think this is going to be the, it. The Sh- you know what? <clears throat> Only because Bianca can say, you got me in 30 seconds. Can you handle me for 60 minutes? I like that. I like yeah. So, and they could do it. These two could do it. It wouldn't be a match where you'd get bored after 15 or 20. Mm-hmm. They could. So, but yes, I think Becky will retain. Becky will probably stay on SmackDown. I think Roman's going to stay on SmackDown, but I think Finn might be headed to Raw. Probably. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah, Raw likes to be the more variety entertaining show. The Demon fits in better over there. Well. If they keep the Demon coming. Well, and he, I think also SmackDown, I mean, SmackDown's the A show now. I think Finn, they might let him do the NXT version of himself over there. Maybe. Yeah, hopefully. I, I didn't even think about the stipulation. Yeah, for the sake of if Becky called her own shot, uh, she'd probably make it a submission match because I don't think Bianca has one. So see if we give a chance for Bianca to unveil something new. Um, Becky, I love you, but the manhandle slam is the rock bottom. You should have tweaked it a little bit. It looks just like it. <laughs> it, looks just, it, it looks just like it. You should have tweaked it a little bit. But anyway, RN, hot, cold, or lukewarm? Uh. I've been kind of cold on this and not for any anything that they've done wrong. Like these are the two best women on SmackDown. They're they're gonna fucking tear it up. This is this may be honestly the match of the night. 
if I'm being 100 percent honest. And like you, I love I've loved Becky since she became the man. I was fully behind it. I thought that she was the biggest star in the entire company and damn near the biggest star in all of wrestling before she uh, left. Uh, but I I think her coming back as a heel was extremely tone deaf. I think her beating Bianca that way was not – it was it was almost them that are the same. Like, you could have had both. You could have had your cake and eat it too with Becky coming back, being the man and being who she is without having to fucking downplay and chop – uh, Bianca's knees from under, and Sa- she took well, if, if Sasha hadn't acted like an idiot, Becky wouldn't have been right. this way. Right, so, and like I said, I yeah. know it's extenuating circumstances. That's why yeah. I said it's, it has nothing to do with the feud itself. Like yeah. I know yeah. what she's doing. Becky is trying to elevate Bianca to that next level, and she does need it. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think I don't think Becky being a heel was the way to do it. I think you wasted some stuff. I, you wasted all the momentum that people were built up for her to come back, right. turning her into a heel, and then it, it took you a month to really get her into a heel, and she's still not. She's still getting cheered. still 50-50 shit, so I feel like you wasted a lot of stuff on that, but like I said, they're going to tear it up, and she took the word. I was going to I was gonna say Iron Man match, too, because of the 26 seconds. Mm-hmm. Same thing. I was like, it, you beat me in 26 smart. seconds. Can you fucking handle me in 30 minutes? Because you know, they're not going to do an hour. Yeah, they always yeah. make the women's 30 minutes, so... Yeah. But like, yeah, you can't. You could you, twenty six seconds. You do it in thirty minutes. Mm. And that was my thing. Like I said, it, I just feel like they were. I wanted the man to come back, the real man. Not. I hate to say it as a heel. This is a watered down version of her, honestly, because yeah. like she doesn't. I don't think like the chains unleashed. When you're that tweener baby face, you can do a little bit of everything, and you can say what you want and do what you want. But when you're stuck in a box as a heel or a baby face. You kind of get hand shackled a little bit, so I I, yeah. I I understand where you're coming from. The the thing and the reason why I think what she's doing is actually in a, in some ways brilliant is the people like you and me are in that just love her. We know this isn't the real her, so that pisses us off. Right? So, no, no. I'm, like I said, so. it's nothing against. That's what I said. It's nothing against what they're actually doing. It's all yeah. fucking dope, and it's gonna work in the end. Yeah. Like there's an end to the means. I'm just saying, all the people waiting for her to come back. I feel like you could have waited on this down the line. Mm. Like, I'm not mad at them doing it. I'm just mad about the timing of it and doing it right when she came back. Even if they just gave us a month of her being yeah. the Becky we know yeah. and then screwing yeah. Bianca over, even if it was on SmackDown, like, that would have been good, too, doing it just on a normal fucking SmackDown to get people talking, especially with all this shit with CM Punk and all them coming back. Yeah. That would have been the perfect time to pull this, pull that on that, yeah. Where, get people talking to take some of the conversation away from AEW. Like, hell, Becky turned heel and turned on Bianca on SmackDown. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. again, I, I think we should have got a little bit of the man we know yeah. and love first. I think I think the switch should have happened this Sunday. I, I, I think that right. I think there should have been, you know what, Bianca? Yeah, you deserve. I a re- came back to face you. Yeah, you, 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 you deserve a rematch. But you know what? I want to. I want to. I want to see. I want to see you earn it. So get out there and earn it, and I definitely will give you a rematch. And let her earn it one on one, or or freaking in a four way, and let her impress everybody. All right, you got your match. I can't wait to. I can't wait to you know face you at Extreme Rules and, um, oh, dang it, I'm sorry guys. Hold on one second. I'm trying to get the. There we go. I'll face you at Extreme Rules, and all the all the while, let her drop hints of. I'm. Aren't y'all glad I'm back? I came back for y'all. I left. I had the baby and everything, and then let it be when she walks out. Extreme rules, and here's those booze. Let it that be the point of, hey, screw all y'all. <laughs> let, it, let it let that be where the turn happens. Not two, right. not two weeks before, because I agree, it felt a little, and especially she didn't come out at SummerSlam this way. She right. came, she came out the way she left in the in the same exactly mess. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so yeah, right a, yeah. suck us in, suck but it's all in. they always prematurely blow their load. They always yeah. do. Like give us a little, fuck us up, I make think, me feel emotionally torn. Over they panicked, you know man. Make me want it. They panicked. Yes. They panicked. They panicked. They panicked. They, they panicked. They oh yeah. Sasha. They called Sasha. Sasha said, "Uh, there, there, there." It's like get Becky on the phone. They panicked. Right. They panicked. Yeah. So anyway. Kyle. To be fair, they, to be fair, they couldn't really. What what other choice did they have really without Sasha? Okay. You're gonna have her Bianca beat Carmella for the fifteenth time in a row. So yeah, like, and, ba- and Bailey at home, yeah. and Bailey at home with a bum knee. Right, exactly. like I said, yeah. I don't. It, it has literally nothing to do with the circumstances right. of what's going on. Yeah. I like it all. Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying from the from the starting point is why. Hundred percent. I'm lukewarm. I, I somewhat disagree. I mean, I'm. I'm if, if there's any match on the card that I'm hot for, it's probably this one because I, I love the build to it. I even. Back 
to SummerSlam where it started. I like how they did it because it wasn't like a thing where Becky dominated Bianca. She it wasn't caught, a thing. She caught her off yeah. guard. Yeah. Bianca's a new, she, she's relatively new to the game. She thought she was facing Sasha. Then she thought she was facing, facing Carmella. Now Becky Lynch is back. And now this whole stadium's going crazy. She hasn't seen Becky before. They haven't been in the ring. So she's crazy. And then she just gets caught with a forearm, just a flash KO, gets hit with a manhandle slam. So I, I think people overreacted yeah. to Bianca losing in that manner because it was, a, like I said, it was a flash KO. It was a fluke finish. So for that reason, if I had to make it this a stipulation, I would make it a last woman standing because you can't lose that in a fluky way. You have mm, to really lose point. it. Try to put him down. <laughs> Got to put him down. So I kind of agree in the sense that maybe they could have yep. transitioned Becky to being a heel differently. Although I do like how she came out in SummerSlam as the man, like we all remember her. And then the way she's turned heel is kind of organic because, you know, oh, I won the title. I'm back. You guys don't like it. Wait, you got you're on Twitter bashing me in, in the finish. So it was kind of organic and they yeah. played off of the reaction yep. that it elicited from the fans. So could they have, you know, maybe taken their time with it? Sure, maybe. But I, I, I don't dislike how they've gone. I do dislike, though. I don't like how Becky's coming out with this stupid fur jacket and Thank the glasses. You. That's like, not her. She's just, she's <laughs> basically Seth, but as a woman. Literally. Now. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not a big fan of that. But as far as the finish goes, just to add another layer to it, I think Sasha Banks comes back and interferes and costs Bianca the match. But Becky Lynch retains. And then I think, like Nikki said, I think Bianca and the Street Profits go to Raw. But Bianca and Sasha can still have their blow off at Survivor Series because it's Battle yep. of the Brands, and then that'll be the de- definitive end because they're on different brands at that point. So, um, but then they both have to be champions. Not necessarily. And they can just they can just be a Raw person and a SmackDown person. Yeah. Well, who says it couldn't happen by November? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's how I think it's going to go. I like. But yeah, it. like yeah. I, I also think it could be match of the night for sure. Guys, let me let, let me throw it out there. I put it out there in the beginning, but let's throw it back out there. Would this match main event? It should. It should. I don't think it will over Roman. That's no. what. That's, yeah. That's why I asked. Is Roman bigger than Becky right now? Yes. Well, you're forgetting the variable of Brock. Is Roman bigger than Becky? No. Is Brock bigger than Becky? I don't think. I we'll mean, see to Brock. me, no. But to me, no. At this point, you know. Roman is Roman's the biggest thing in wrestling right now. The people can yeah. shake it off and pretend like it's not, but he is the biggest thing in wrestling. Mm. Yeah, because they already did the Brock re- return at SummerSlam, and right. like, how would they yeah. do it any different here? So I don't think Brock's going to show up. Like, he's not going to come to Columbus. Like, yeah. he got he got pay him a lot of money to do that. So um, I, I think maybe, if anything, they might tease it on SmackDown or something. But otherwise, yeah, I don't think. I mean, they did release a lot of people, so you know their pocketbooks are a little full now. <laughs> Hey, Columbus yeah. is about as close to his fucking house as you're gonna get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll only show it show up at the top the states that border Canada like, or as where as, as yeah. close as they're gonna get. Or like just a little flight from the border of Canada. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He isn't gonna go anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. I appreciate y'all joining me tonight. Again, Extreme Rules this Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Watch it on the Peacock Network, or for those of you outside the country, watch it on the WWE Network, wherever you are. I uh, also want to uh, just say real quick, if you want to support our show financially, we would love it if you did that. You can go to paypal.me slash pod and you can give us a one-time donation there. Or go and visit our Patreon. Yes, we have a Patreon. And if you go there, we have four different subscription tiers. And depending on what tier you sign up for, you'll get different kinds of levels of stuff. Everything you see there from shout outs to sticker packs, exclusive content, a Smack Draw t-shirt, behind the scenes access. We will even advertise for your brand. And you'll get some special video content that nobody will see except those that are Patreons. So please make sure you sign up for that if you want to support us even more. All of this goes towards helping us get out the best content for the show and again thank you for watching us here on our twitch channel our youtube channel like comment subscribe give us a follow we would greatly appreciate it and and listen to us on whatever podcast platform you prefer uh queen nikki please put yourself over tell us where we can find you on social media what do the queens of the ring have coming up so we have an episode coming saturday where we discuss everything that's happened this week and rant about a lot of stuff because that's what we usually do. 
Um, so you can find me on Twitter at Nikki underscore zero four two two, or you could follow the podcast at Q O T R podcast. And we're wherever podcasts are available. We're everywhere. RN, what you got going on with the dog kennel business, with your music's business, and what's uh, what's the next mute RN you're going to be cutting? Uh, the next mute RN will show up. I think actually we debuted one today. Yes, we did. Thank you for reminding that me. Dickhead yes. fan that, uh, yeah, check us out on YouTube. It's about that fan that jumped the gate at the AEW show a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then kennel wise, I got some pups on the ground. If you're interested in the French Bulldog, hit me up on uh, Instagram at Route Four Kennel. That's R O U T E four K E N N E L. Hit me up on Facebook. Got my government name R N A K U. Also hit us up on uh, YouTube for a Mean Jelly Me Productions. We got a couple of songs we just dropped. Check out Megan's song. It's, that's a song for you, Bam, and no cussing in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a listen. I'm not. I'm not anti cussing. I'm just not going to do it. All right, and Kyle, I know, please I just, put yourself. I just got to give you shit about. I know, man. <laughs> Kyle, what's Apron Bump got coming in the near future? You put out awesome stuff. What can we expect? Oh, I appreciate it. Uh, the Apron Bump podcast. Uh, you can find me wherever you listen to podcasts. Also on YouTube as well. Give me a little subscribe. See there. Uh, just dropped an episode recapping TNA Sacrifice 2005 uh, with Frank from the Last Minute Podcast. And I like to have different podcasters on every time, too. Uh, next, So next week will be uh, In Your House 1 with Kenny from A Kenny for Your Thoughts. So I like to cover uh, wrestling promotions, retro pay-per-view, special event reviews from promotions big and small all over the world across four different decades. So. Uh, feel free to listen if you want to feel a little nostalgia or discover something new. But uh, yeah, apronbump.com is where you can find pretty much everything. Awesome. Fire. Awesome. And you guys can follow me at Bammer Dave 24 You can follow the Bammer Slammer at Bammer Slammer. And you can follow the Smack Draw brand at Smack Draw Podcast. Thank you, Queen Nikki. Thank you, RN. Thank you, Kyle. And until the next time we drop the hammer, we'll see you next time on the Bammer Slammer. Have a good night, everybody. Thank mm-hmm. you.